of the International Secret Police. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. As you remember, in the last episode, Speed Gibson, his uncle, Clint Barlow, ace operator in the International Secret Police, and Barney Dunlap, Clint's working partner, were about to board the China Clipper in disguise and under assumed names bound for Hong Kong, where the dread criminal, the Octopus, has renewed his smuggling activities. Just as they approach the giant plane, however, Clint recognizes in one of the other passengers a jewel smuggler whom he and Barney sent to prison a few years previously. The man sees them at the same time says a few words to his companion, who in turn summons a nearby police officer. The boys try to get to the plane, but are stopped by the officer and the smuggler, who claims to be a private detective and who says that Clint, Barney, and Speed have been acting suspiciously and should be held for investigation. For a few tense moments, it looks as if the boys will miss the clipper plane, but Chief Riley has been so careful about their passports, using their assumed names and disguises, and has provided credentials so excellent that the officer at last releases our friends and reprimands the supposed private detective to be more careful of his accusations thereafter. He mumbles something about mistaken identity. Then he and the boys board the plane, and now we find our friends comfortably seated in the clipper, six hours out of San Francisco. Gee, I can, I can hardly believe that we're really flying in the clipper. Seems most too good to be true. I'd hate to be flying without it. We must be plenty high to be above the fog down there, Speed. Yeah. Isn't this swell, Barney? The moon makes the fog look all silver. Folks down on the ocean probably can't see the moon at all or the stars. Up here, they're as big as anything. Well, don't get so excited about it, kid. I, I can hardly believe we're really on the China Clipper. Well, you'd better start believing it, Speed, with that jewel smuggler aboard. I'm just as sure he's a member of the Octopus Day as I'm sure we're in the air. I think so, too, Clint. Else why'd he try to keep us ashore by framing us with that cop? Yeah, our passports are what saved us. And see that you remember who those passports are made out for, Speed. Now, Barney here is supposed to be Jim Fletcher, a retired Texas oil man. And you're his son, Earl. And I'm your French tutor, Pierre Dorset. Don't forget all that when we're talking where people can overhear us, kid. Well, I won't, Barney. Clint, you look so different with your hair dyed black and curled. And Barney with that fake squint and mustache... You think that smuggler really knew who you both were? Well, I don't know, Speed. Criminals are suspicious of everything and everyone. Now, he may have glimpsed something familiar about us, or, or his instinct may have warned him of danger. Rather than take any chances, he tried to keep us from flying on the same ship with him. Yeah, all that business about him being a private detective and us the crooks. I wanted to turn him over to the cop. Oh, and reveal who we really were. Oh, don't be a chump on it. We can't make an official move while we're traveling in disguise and under assumed names. I know, I know. Have to take everything and can't dish anything out in return. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Barney. We'll get our earnings when we reach Hong Kong. Meanwhile, think of all the excitement we're going to have during the trip. Gosh, it doesn't seem possible that we'll reach the Hawaiian Islands tomorrow morning. Yeah, these ships are plenty fast. It's only 18 hours flying time between Alameda and Honolulu. And after that, our next stop is Midway Island. Gosh... How long is the stop over at Honolulu? Oh, uh, just about 24 hours. We take off again the next morning, uh, providing the weather is right. And am I going to make use of them 24 hours? No sleeping for me. I'm going to go swimming at Waikiki Beach, eat fish and poi, listen to ukuleles, and maybe watch some of those hula dances I've been hearing so much about. You can do that if you want, Barney. But I'm going to watch that jewel smuggler. And if I have any spare time, I'm going surfboard riding. Boy, I can hardly wait. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, this is the life, Clint. <clears throat> Lunch at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel... And now, basking on the sands of Waikiki Beach. Yeah, but I wish I could be in that water with speed. Look, look at that kid right there at surfboard in. Oh, he's part flying fish anyhow. You know, Clint, sometimes it makes me stop and think. 
That kid can do almost everything with just a little practice. Things that it takes me years to learn. <laughs> it just runs in the family, Barney. <laughs> We're just naturally smart. Oh, yeah? If you're so smart, why didn't you fix this phony mustache of mine so it wouldn't float off in water? I want to go swimming. Well, try growing one, then you can. <laughs> Besides, I didn't think you wanted to leave the beach uh, as long as that uh, girl was on it. Uh, oh, you've noticed her too, huh? Well, I noticed her during lunch at oh, the hotel. Yeah. She had a little girl with her then. Yeah, she's still with her, at least near her. See, in the water, almost in a direct line with speed. Hmm? Oh, yeah, I see her now. Well, I hope she doesn't go out too far. Looks like she can't swim. She's watching speed. Say, look at that big coma racing toward her. Suffering wang doodles. She's lost her foot and she's going out to sea. Well, come on, let's go after her. Oh, speed, speed, Caesar. Hope he can grab her. Speed, speed. Try to keep your head up. I'm coming. I'm coming. Here, here, grab my hand. That's right. Now you're all right. Don't try to swim. Don't try to do anything. Just relax and I'll get you ashore. That big wave knocked me down. No. Don't waste breath. Rockin'. Come on, Speed. Keep it up. Oh, swell. Ted and Barney are away not to help me. Just come for more, Speed. Look out for that big finger. Now, now, don't be frightened. That wave tilt us. It brought us in. I'll take the little girl. You would have been so tough, but, but for the undertow, you kept pulling against us. Be careful. Careful, hit those two young ladies. Jean, Jean, honey, are you all right? I think so, Martin. Oh, sure, she's all right, miss. Just a little waterlogged, I reckon. She'll be good as new when she's dried out. Oh, how can I ever thank you all? And particularly this young man for saving her. Why, Jean would have been swept out to sea if he hadn't been so near her and acted so quickly. Oh, Marcia, I thought I was going to drown. Oh, there, there, darling. You're safe now. And don't you think you'd better thank your rescuer? Yes. Thank you. What is your name? Spear. Um, uh, Earl Fletcher. May I introduce ourselves? Earl is the son of Mr. James Fletcher, and I am Monsieur Dorsey, the young gentleman's tutor. Oh, I don't need to tell you how happy we are to meet you all. This is Jean Kingsley, and I'm Marcia Winfield, her governor. Oh, uh, uh, Will you and little Jean have supper with us tonight, Miss Winfield? Why, I, well, yes. Probably Miss Winfield will be dining with Mademoiselle Jean's parents, Mr. Fletcher. Oh, no. You see, Jean's father is in China in the diplomatic service. Oh, then it's a cinch you won't be eating with him this evening. So you will eat with us, huh? Well, yes, Mr. Fletcher, we'd love to. And now I'd better take Jean back to the hotel to recover from the effects of her narrow escape. Thank you again. Goodbye, Speed, Clint, and Barney. Huh? Hey, those aren't our names. Why, no, Jean. Wherever did you hear those names? Well, that's what they called one another when I was being saved, Marsha. How come you heard anything when you were half drowned? Well, I don't remember calling anybody anything. I was too busy trying to get in. Well, probably the child heard us urging Earl to exercise more speed in effecting the rescue. Under such circumstances, it is only natural that such confusion should occur. Oh, no, Mr. Dorsey. I heard you plain as anything. Jean, you mustn't contradict. And now come along. We'll see our friends later. Yeah, Goodbye. Bye. 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 Wouldn't you know a girl here thinks she shouldn't, even when she was drowning? Mm, out of the mouths of babes. The accident of a split second can upset weeps of careful planning. Nothing's upset. Miss Winfield didn't pay any attention to the kid. Well, maybe not. But that girl has brains as well as beauty, Bonnie. And you didn't help manners any, Romeo, by asking her to dine with us tonight. Say, the more we stay to ourselves, the less chance of a split up. Ah, oh, a little supper won't hurt anything. <laughs> we can tell more about that after supper. Would you care for some more ice cream, Mademoiselle Jean? No, thank you, Mr. Dorsey. I'd like some more. More? You had two dishes already. Another one and you'd never leave this table. <laughs> well, you wouldn't mind staying in Honolulu, would you, Earl? Well, it's swell here, Miss Winfield, but, but I'm looking forward to the rest of our clipper trip. Midway, Wake, and Guam Islands, Manila, and then Hong Kong. Gee. Hong Kong. 
Yes, I'm anxious to reach China, too. You going over soon? Tomorrow morning. We'll be fellow passengers on the clipper ship, Mr. Fletcher. Will you... You and little Jean are flying to China, mademoiselle? Yes, I took the position as governess to Jean with that understanding. You see, her father went there six months ago and left Jean in my charge with instructions to bring her over as soon as he gave me the word to come. Well, I received that word just the other day, and I was fortunate in being able to get passages on the clip. Oh, that's swell, but... Uh, the, the check, Mr. Fletcher. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, uh, check. Oh, yeah, the dinner check. Sure, sure. Uh, let's see what the damages are. What's that note under it? A, a note? Yeah. It isn't addressed to anyone. Here, I'll open it. What did it say, Earl? It says, to all at this table, better not attempt the impossible. Leave well enough alone and do not take the clipper tomorrow morning... The octopus gives but one warning. The octopus? Do you know what this means, mademoiselle? Yes. Yes, that note is meant for me. The octopus is a terrible criminal who has brought tragedy into my life. I... Go on, Miss Winville. I can't. I dare not. He knew I was here. He or his spies may be listening to me right now. But he's the reason I must go to China. Can we help you, Miss Winfield? I don't know. But I trust you and Mr. Dorsey and Mr. Fletcher... I feel that you're perhaps the only people in the whole world I can trust. Will you, for Jean's sake, will you give us your protection until we reach Hong Kong? But, Miss Winfield, I... Oh, after we reach China and Jean is safe with her father, I won't bother you anymore. What I must do then, I must do alone. But until then, will you promise us your protection? You have my promise. And mine, mademoiselle. Me too, Miss Winfield. We'll lick this octopus by whoever he is. I'm not afraid of anybody who's afraid to fight in the open.